Industrial robots are changing the way we make virtually everything, from the manufacturing of computer chips to the way we make cars. Robots aren't the whole story. How data is created, collected, and interpreted has fundamentally changed the way we live. And now, those same changes are happening in construction. No longer relying on pen and paper, designers use computational tools that let them manage larger sets of information about their designs. Terms like BIM, CAD, and CAM refer to building information modeling, computer-aided design, and computer-assisted manufacturing. These tools are progressively changing how buildings are made by bridging the gap between the concept of a design and the way that design is made. Wood construction is at the forefront of this transformation. As skilled labor gets harder and harder to find, it's a challenge for this whole industry. Um, and as, as we want to build more precise buildings that function better, that work better, that meet energy codes, we've got to build at a precision level that's hard to do with a skill saw and, an, and a nail gun on a site when it's raining. If the steel columns, the, the metal, what holds them, the, these posts, they can be turned then exactly to the diameter and then we can guarantee that it will fit. And all this time you take then to make it fit is, is, is just gone then. Using robotics, it allows us to assemble more pieces and more complex pieces that in totality result in higher performing building components, more material efficient building components and building components that have um, integrated services at like electrical and mechanical systems. If you were to do that in a, in a manual assembly process, it would take too long, it would be too complex. You just wouldn't do that kind of assembly process. Along with the innovation in robotic technology comes an innovation in the software that designers use. Architects and engineers now have access to powerful parametric software that can create and analyze complex geometries. Parametrics give you great control over your geometries. You can vary it on a slider, you can vary it on a graph, and you can check iterations very quickly. When parametrics give you great control over the geometry, the next challenge is moving it into construction because you need the accuracy in construction to be the same as the accuracy in the geometry that you have when you design. In Canada, universities, industry leaders, and innovators are working together to create new products new businesses, and new design strategies that will transform the way we build. At the Centre for Advanced Wood Processing in Vancouver, researchers from the University of British Columbia and the University of Waterloo are working with Intelligent City, a local leader in mass timber construction, to make robotic fabrication more accessible. If you're, for instance, in parts, or if you are in design, or you're in timber, and that's not part of what your job is, what your research is, getting access to those boundaries the, the time in the machine is really already committed for something else. Working with students, wood experts, designers and builders, they create innovative wood structures that test the limits of robotics. What does it take to connect that geometry to the computational workflow, to the manufacturing, to the assembly, and in many cases to our workshop to actually the building? There's a difference between what can be designed on paper or in software and what can actually be manufactured. The mandate of the Centre for Advanced Wood Processing is to support research initiatives within the wood science department and to also support industry with training initiatives. They are wood experts that really understand how wood behaves. Sometimes what we're trying to do is work with the designers on kind of pushing those limits. In order for robotic fabrication to be fully embraced, we need much more vertical integration in the architecture, engineering and construction industry. Manufacturing, prefabrication and construction need to be seen not as a mere consequence of design but as part of the design process. And we need to ask questions as to what we can prefabricate and what we can construct very early on in the design process. 
In the workshop, we started by setting sort of a general framework of parameters. And we're looking at very free-form geometries, very curvy and expressive geometries, but it's very much the same as if we were to be designing a house. Let's say we have a house that is four meters wide by eight meters long. Now, when we're designing a house as a concept, we're able to imagine where the doors are, where the windows are, and what any other feature on that space would be. Now, what's really cool about this computational process is that we can manipulate, and if I change that house and it's not eight by 10 meters, all of those elements are also correlated to that, so they will adjust. So if my door needs to be in the center and I change the length, that door will move and align itself with the center of that house. Now, normally this is something that we do in design, which is called associative design or parametric design. But here, we're also connecting that to the manufacturer. So we can take that wall digitally and put it flat in a way that then can be manufactured. Intricate details about the construction of joints or the way parts are assembled are directly translated into robot code. This code is simple. Working in Cartesian coordinates, three numbers define the position in space and three numbers define the angle of rotation. The robot then simply moves from one defined point to another. Not only are we able to then generate the geometry and the toolpaths that the robot or the machine needs to be able to cut and process that, but we also have the information on how that wall is connected to every other wall in the house or the roof. Although this might seem simple, the direct connection between design geometry and fabrication data is what gives robotics its unique edge. What is being designed up front is not necessarily being informed by what, what can be fabricated and what can be constructed. And so that's what really becomes a consequence of the design. And so sometimes architects and engineers overestimate what can be constructed, and sometimes they underestimate it. And so they try to rationalize and simplify designs, even though they wouldn't need to. Teaching students about robotics allows them to engage with the state of the art in fabrication. So when they go out into the industry, they're prepared for the technology that's coming, that's not the technology that's necessarily here. It allows them to understand how fabrication happens and that gives them some control over their design because they understand what they can design and what the machines can and can't do. We look at sort of the very specific uh, computational design workflow where we take the definition, we take the design that we had, we take the computational workflow, and we have each student operate the robot and understand not only how to manipulate it in just X, Y, and Z coordinates, but then how to also input code, how to run a program, and what I call also babysitting the robot, which means actually having uh, control during the fabrication process to make any adjustments on speed as the process is being cut, as the pieces are being built. As some people are fabricating, others are already prepping the pieces, or kind of lo looking at the logistics of assembly, and then troubleshooting everything that comes with the project. The really cool thing about it is that, you know, we start with a design and an idea, but it's actually all of us coming together that we figure out how to put it finally together. And then some, sometimes we have some setbacks, but having all the participants bring in their own expertise, we're able to troubleshoot those ideas, and then develop a prototype that we're all very proud of. We need to explore what is possible, and in order to best do that, universities and research institutions are required to experiment without having the need to immediately implement these technologies. And I think that's really critical for us to kind of build a generation of entrepreneurs, because that applied work and that connection between the institution gives a tremendous amount of freedom to investigate ideas and to really, you know, get people who are eager and ambitious to figure ways of building, ways of engaging technology, ways of applying that technology to real problems so that people get more excited and they want to actually understand how to take advantage of these developments. Robotic fabrication is not only meant to automate existing processes, but to augment what we can do and further to introduce new processes that were not possible previously.